What's going on guys, Super Savage uh, 789 here, bringing you guys another video, and today we're doing What If Mr. Satan Absorbed Margin Boo Part 2. If you haven't seen the first part, go and check it out, as you'll be pretty confused if you're watching Part 2 before Part 1. What are you doing here? Come on. But if you have seen it, and you should have, let's get into today's video. Piccolo and Goku would be training in Otherworld in the coming months. It's a very emotional reunion for both of them, as they haven't seen each other in a while. As they train, Piccolo would be telling Goku about everything that happened on Earth, which gets Goku quite upset. He would have loved to have fought Freezer again, or even that Beerus guy. The Namekian tells Goku that maybe it's time he came back to life. Initially, Goku refuses, but Piccolo would continue trying to convince him. The Earth needs strong protectors. Plus, Goku isn't getting nearly as much fun dead than he would fighting alive people. Goku laughs, telling Piccolo that he knows him so well. He agrees to think about it in the time being. As for the Earth, Mr. Saiyan would decide to hold a press conference where he reveals his true form. He says that he came to an understanding about how to protect Earth and now he's going to kick it into high gear. Everyone around the globe would cheer as they completely disregard Mr. Satan's new face. After the close call with Frieza, Mr. Satan and Gohan would train a bit harder together. Videl was badly hurt and Piccolo died, so it's a good motivator for Gohan to train harder while continuing to study. Videl would be doing light training with her family as well, and would likely be one of the strongest humans thanks to it. She still has to take care of Pan though, and it's hard to get a babysitter without Piccolo being alive. On Beerus' planet, Shampoo would still pull up, and Beerus still wins the food tournament, leading to an argument between brothers. Both of them would want to fight each other, but their angels have to stop them. So I think we could see Shampa still suggesting the tournament here, as he needs to beat Beerus. Beerus agrees, and so the five-man roster would need to be formed. The duo of Beerus and Whis head to Earth to recruit fighters, since they don't know anyone else who'd be strong enough to participate. They have no need for Monarcha here, as Beerus isn't trying to motivate anyone. He simply just wants to win. As for the roster, I think Mr. Satan and Videl are easy picks. Gohan says that he has a conference that day, but with a lack of strong fighters, Beerus tells him it's either he participates or be destroyed. So the hybrid is forced to enter. As for the last two, I could see Krillin entering. I also think that Gotenks would be an option they ultimately go with, as Gotenks was able to land a few hits on Frieza. So that's our team. Goten and Trunks are trained by Gohan for the remaining days, and it gives them a decent enough boost. The first fight is between Krillin and Botamo. While Krillin initially struggles, he is a tactical fighter, so I'm sure he could figure out a tactic to ring out the yellow bouncy ball. Up against Frost though, Krillin would lose to his first form, without the need to cheat. Next up is Gohan. He'd be initially skeptical of Frost, but ultimately laments that he is a good guy. Thanks to Gohan being fairly strong, he's able to force Frost into his final form, fairly quickly, just to be able to keep up. Gohan's ultimate form is too strong though, which forces Frost to use his needle for a ring out. Videl steps up next, and will be trying to trip Frost up. She's pretty strong, but obviously nowhere near Gohan, so Frost will be stronger than her. Her martial arts knowledge would be good enough to keep her in the ring until Frost inevitably cheats to ring her out. This leads to Frost being called out as a cheater. While Videl is allowed back into the ring, Gotenks steps up. The kids just assumed they were up next, so they got in the ring. Not wanting to waste the time limit, Videl decides to step down and lets Gotenks fight. The fusion would power up to Super Saiyan 3 and proceeds to eliminate Frost using his very tricky techniques like the Galactic Donor and the Volleyball Fist. Against Magetta, obviously Gotenks will have no issue. Magetta's big weakness is Trash Talk, and some would say that's all Gotenks is. So as soon as Magetta enters, he's as quick to be wrung out. By the time Carver enters though, the boys defuse. Shampa calls out Beerus for cheating, but the referee rules it as fine, as technically Gotenks was one being. Both boys are not allowed to continue though. Mr. Satan then steps up to fight Kaba. This fight would be comedic, as both of them would assume the other is much stronger than they actually are. Kaba believes this because of Mr. Satan's flashy demeanor and scary face, and Mr. Satan believes it because of what he knows of Satan's. Not wanting to back down, Kaba attacks the margin, causing him to panic. He'd begin fighting back frantically, and would be pushing Kaba back. I don't think he'd be above Kaba, but he wouldn't be far off. Plus with his unorthodox fighting style, Mr. Satan would be able to barely pull the dub against the Saiyan. Kaba would applaud Mr. Satan afterward, asking how he got so strong, and Mr. Satan would begin telling him some great lies, making the Z-Fight sweat drop. Some things never change. So Mr. Satan would now need to fight Hit. With his ego being boosted from beating Kaba, he'd be a lot more cocky fighting Hit, proceeding to attack him, only to never land an attack. Mr. Satan is a good fighter, but he's not smart enough to pick up on Hit's time skip, so he'd be rather confused on what's happening. Regardless, he isn't going to give up. At first, he tried to resort to his old tricks, faking a stomachache to try and get some sympathy only to go for an attack, but obviously that doesn't work. 
With no other options, he'd resort to everything Boo has given him, attempting candy beams and growing extra limbs to try and land a hit on the assassin. It doesn't work though as Hit just dodges and continues punching him. After noticing Mr. Satan continuing to regenerate, Hit proceeds to just knock him off the arena. While Mr. Satan couldn't do anything substantial by himself, his fight was enough to clue Gohan in on what Hit's fighting style is. Upon entering the arena, he proceeds to do a similar tactic to what Goku did in canon. With his ultimate form being pretty strong, I'd place him above God Goku right now, meaning that he'd be able to overpower Hit. So the fight culminates in Gohan knocking Hit out of the arena and giving the win to Universe 7. Zeno then pulls up and says that he enjoyed the fights, and the wish on Super Shenron is made. After this though, there's going to be an absence of a certain arc. You see, in this tournament, none of the mortals were using godly power, so I don't think Zamasu was going to be nearly as mad. Sure, they were using some weird techniques, and they were pretty strong, but it's not as much as insulting the gods. While he'd still hate mortals, I don't think he'd be too far gone, and slowly could be tutored by Gawasu into becoming a better person. So the only notable thing that occurs here is that Zeno asked to meet Mr. Satan, as he found him funny. The god asked him to be his friend, and Mr. Satan would agree, though he's quite nervous. From time to time, Mr. Saiyan meets with Zeno to play with him and tell him stories, which makes the Omni King laugh. Eventually, I believe that Zeno would still host a tournament of power, but I imagine it wouldn't be the same at all. You see, Mr. Saiyan would have told Zeno about the various escapades he got up to, including the Tenkaichi Budokai, and would even show him videos of it. So after the God Battle Royale starts, Mr. Saiyan would tell Zeno that one of the flaws of this kind of tournament is that you don't get to see everyone fight to their fullest. People can hide or use cheap tricks to win. Zeno agrees, and so he asks the Grand Priest to make a quick bracket for the Gods of Destruction. He agrees that this is better, but still not great. So the idea for mortals to fight like this is set up, but the Tournament of Power now being in a proper tournament structure. You could say this might be a bit unrealistic, but I think it works well. Plus, it's a cool idea for Mr. Saiyan to have that much influence. This also means that the various universes now need to recruit 8 fighters instead of 10, in order to make the tournament rosters actually work. The obvious choices for Universe 7 are Mr. Saiyan, Gohan, and Videl. Gohan also asks Whis to go to Otherworld and get Piccolo and his father, which the angel agrees to. He returns to both Goku and Piccolo, who would be brief on the situation, greeting everyone warmly. They ask if Piccolo plans to return, with the Namekian agreeing. He then looks at Goku, asking him if he's also ready. The Saiyan smiles, saying that he'd love to. Everyone has gotten so strong, he wants to catch up, so Whis revives them both. Goku and Gohan then have a quick sparring match, with Goku and Veil Super Saiyan 3. With all the time spent on training it proficiently, Goku has essentially mastered it to the point where the drain isn't an issue. While he gives a good showing, obviously Gohan wins. With Goku being back, the idea of the Super Saiyan God is reignited in Beerus as he approaches him, asking if he is one. He unfortunately says no though. Everyone then remembers that they may have enough Saiyans to perform the ritual. Vegeta's brother pulled up a few years ago in a pretty uneventful special. If they could find him, then maybe they could create one. We searches him out and goes to pick him up where he agrees to help. So Goku becomes a Super Saiyan God and fights Beerus, giving him a better showing than his canon self did. He even shows off the new technique he created while in Otherworld, the Dragon Fist. Anyway, they have to pick three of the members of the team, and I honestly just think they're picking Roshi, Kron, and Ten Shinhan. The androids didn't really want to join, and they don't have experience with tournaments like this, so picking people who have done this before, two of which who have won, would be their best bet. So with our team set, Everyone begins training. Goku likely enters the time chamber with Gohan just to get stronger, as Goku needs to play catch up, even with his god form. Mr. Saiyan also begins training with his boot techniques once more to have a better proficiency of it, training with Piccolo and Videl to get his candy beam to fire quicker. I think the hierarchy of the team going in would be Gohan as the strongest, followed by Goku and Mr. Saiyan being on par. Then it's Piccolo, Videl, Krillin, Roshi, and sadly Ten Shinhan. So we'll cover the whole tournament of power in the next part. As that's where I'm gonna leave it here. Make sure to like and subscribe, and comment down below what you think will happen in the next episode. Mr. Satan absorbing Boo has surprisingly changed a lot, right? The Universe 6 tournament was the main thing we covered this part, and I usually wouldn't do that, but I think with the setup for the tournament of power being what it's going to be, we need to save all that for one part. And there was no black arc, so, you know, we had to, we had to make this one a bit uneventful, and I apologize for that, but obviously part three is going to be way more eventful so subscribe for that and i'll see you on the next one bye